This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Starting tomorrow, the state of Indiana will begin to gradually reopen under new COVID-19 guidelines recently announced by Governor Holcomb. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Griffin. The reopening will happen in five stages lasting through July 4th. Indiana has been in stage one since March. That's a near total lockdown. On Monday, most of the state will move to stage two where restrictions will start to loosen with the exception of Marion, Lake and Cass counties where coronavirus cases are the highest. Those counties remain at stage one until at least May 15th. Under stage two, the restriction on social gathering loosens up, allowing gatherings to be as large as 25 people. Most retail businesses will be able to operate at 50% capacity. Then on May 11th, hair and nail salons and barber shops will be able to open by appointment only. Also on May 11th, restaurants and bars that serve food will be able to open at 50% capacity. When Indiana moves into stage three on May 24th, gyms, fitness centers, playgrounds, tennis courts and theaters will be able to operate at half capacity. The maximum capacity for retail stores and malls will be moved up from 50% to 75%. The restriction on social gatherings will be eased from 25 people to 100 people. And then in June, bars, nightclubs, museums, zoos and sports leagues will reopen. And then coming at stage five on July 4th, if all goes well and the data supports it, conventions, sporting events and fairs resume. We know this is a lot of information. We do have it all broken down right now on the RTV6 app. New at 11, two IUPUI professors are taking a closer look at the state level executive orders issued across the country meant to manage COVID-19. The research will eventually allow leaders to better understand which orders worked and which ones did not. Peter Fetterman and Callie Curley are both assistant professors at the O'Neill School at IUPUI. Their focus is on two types of executive orders, restrictions and suspensions. Restrictions include limiting gatherings and closing non-essential business, while suspension includes things like postponing elections or extending tax deadlines. They are comparing each state's actions to its total number of COVID-19 cases. We talked to them about what they are finding so far and their ultimate goal. Identifying effective strategies that are working for states to reduce mobility, um, to reduce case growth rate. Uh, but we're also really concerned about accountability and making sure that we are developing a record in a centralized location of all these big changes to democracy. Some of the changes for democracy that we're seeing are about putting things online, making access not only you know physical but also technological. And so it provides us an opportunity to maybe change the landscape of what democracy looks like. The professors are creating a public portal to display their findings to help leaders better understand the impact of their decisions for the future and to help people hold their governments accountable. Right now, the data is still being processed, but when comparing Indiana to Montana, Florida and Ohio, Governor Holcomb appears to have issued fewer orders, but each order tended to include more substance. The state health department will host drive through COVID-19 testing clinics this week at five sites around the state. The clinics will run from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday and Tuesday in East Chicago and 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday in Lafayette, Newcastle, Plymouth and Seymour. The clinics are open to symptomatic health care workers, first responders and essential workers. Testing will also be available to symptomatic people who live with one of those workers along with people who have COVID-19 symptoms and underlying medical concerns that put them at higher risk. We have the list of locations on the IndyChannel.com. Just click on this story on the homepage. The state health department says the death toll is now 1,132. The number of confirmed cases in our state is getting closer to 20,000. More than 108,000 people have been tested so far in Indiana. Church leaders are coming together all across the city to spread a message of hope during the pandemic. Troy Washington is working for you to explain how the launch of a new campaign is bringing light to the Circle City. 
Pastors pushing positivity. There is power in numbers. We already see physically around 3,000 people that come to St. Luke's every Sunday. And with this pandemic, we've seen double that amount uh, tuning into our online worship services. And on Easter, we had over 10,000 people joining us for online worship. And so what we know is that people are searching and looking for spiritual connection and for community. At least 30 church leaders are taking part in the campaign, setting its sights on spreading the good news during a time when it's needed more than ever. Everything that's been important to people has been knocked out from under them. I mean, uh, athletic sports, uh, entertainment, travel, uh, academics. I mean, I can just keep going down the line is all gone. And so it leaves people with an uncertainty. The Hope for Indy campaign was created by Fish Hook, a team committed to being an extension of those ministering the gospel. The team has created a place for all churches to share stories of encouragement to feed people spiritually. This is created more collaboration. So typically we would not hear of 30 churches all doing something together like this. And I think that this pandemic has taught us that denominational lines, other differences, it doesn't matter. What matters is bringing the hope of Jesus Christ to people. The goal is to share love and light that lasts beyond this dark time throughout the Circle City and beyond. Working for you, Troy Washington, RTV6. Troy, thank you. To learn more about Hope for Indy and to see participating churches, just go to theindychannel.com. As the pandemic continues, Spay Neuter Services of Indiana is launching a campaign to help struggling veterinary clinics across the state. The Fix is in Crisis Relief Fund is a $100,000 emergency relief effort for Indiana's veterinary clinics hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. Many nonprofit clinics operate on a tight budget and they are facing economic hardships due to closures like many other small businesses during stay-at-home orders. Vet clinics did reopen last Monday. Spay and neuter services of Indiana will now use money from the relief fund to provide free spay and neuter surgery certificates to rescue groups and shelters to make sure their surgery schedules are filled and as many animals as possible are being fixed. Once they are done fostering, we are going to have a backlog of people that need to have those animals fixed before they can move them to their permanent homes. We also have community cats out in the field that are reproducing and bringing litters. And this is the time of year, springtime, when mama cats have a lot of litters and we can easily be inundated. Um, it's a really bad time to not be able to do the surgeries. In effort to reach their goal of $100,000, they do need your support. We do have a link right now on the RTV6 app with ways that you can donate. The first $100,000 will be matched by a donor. Now to your Storm Team 6 forecast. Meteorologist Kyle Mount standing by. Kyle, a nice Sunday. Yeah, Nicole, you know, we had a lot of dry weather this weekend, but some of us also picked up a lot of rain out of those thunderstorms last night. And again, some of those this afternoon. You can see that band near and just south of I-70 where some areas picked up over two inches of rain. Even Shelby County reports over three inches of rain. Good news, satellite radar very quiet out there. In fact, those skies have cleared out pretty nicely. Temperatures are sitting in the lower 50s now. It's 50 in Kokomo, 52 in Indy, and 51 in Bloomington. Out the door in the morning. Sunshine will greet you. We'll have those temperatures starting off in the 40s. We'll talk about the return of rain showers, though, and that's seven day forecast. Kyle, thank you. Tonight, police are investigating the tragic shooting of a 16 year old girl killed this morning after she was hit by a stray bullet. IMPD says the girl was inside a vehicle with her family when that stray bullet hit her. It happened just before one o'clock this morning on East 38th Street near North Arlington Avenue. The girl was rushed to the hospital in critical condition and died from her injuries. The coroner just identified her as Naya Cope. Police spent the entire morning in the area with streets blocked off as the investigation continues. We talked to the pastor of New Direction Church, which is located right down the street from the crime scene on East 38th Street. He has this message tonight for the community. 
first and foremost, I would encourage people, if you know something, say something, because we all have to be considerate of this family, and we have to put ourselves in the shoes of her family, because if your loved one or your friend was taken away from you, you would want someone to come forward. So we always encourage people, if you have information, then go to the proper authorities and share with them what you know. And if perhaps you're a little bit afraid of that, then you can always reach out as well. Call the church. Kenneth Sol Sullivan Jr. has been the pastor at New Direction Church for 14 years, and he says the community is connected and there is a lot of love and pride, so he hopes someone does the right thing and comes forward. You can call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS with any information. This is senseless. It is senseless, and, and we got to stop this madness uh, that we're seeing in the community, particularly during a period of time where the governor and the mayor said we're supposed to be at home. Tonight, Reverend Charles Harrison, the president of the Indianapolis 10 Point Coalition, is concerned about large gatherings happening in parking lots around the city. Harrison was sent photos and videos of a meetup with hundreds of cars in the strip mall there at East 38th Street and North Arlington Avenue last night. This is the same area where that 16 year old girl was shot. Tonight, police are not saying whether or not the shooting was connected to the gathering. Reverend Harrison says a similar meetup happened Friday night at 38th in Illinois streets and police had to disperse that group. He says with the COVID-19 pandemic, this is not healthy for people to be meeting up, getting out of their cars and not practicing social distancing. The second concern that I had was that these large gatherings like this tend to create uh, a public safety issue too. And uh, there were other uh, videos last night of young people fighting with each other at that location. And then sadly, when I heard this morning that a 16 year old was shot and killed in that same area, you know, it really concerned me uh, that uh, people were gathering in these large numbers and, and not really being responsible with the COVID-19 uh, and not maintaining social distancing, but yet also it tends to produce violence that tragically may have led to the death of a 16 year old. Reverend Harrison says when children and young adults meet in large groups, they put themselves at risk and put their loved ones who they go home to at risk of the virus as well. He's also concerned that it stretches the resources of law enforcement when they have to respond to meetups like this one on top of other emergencies across the city. New tonight, a shooting investigation at a northwest side apartment complex. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. The shooting happened around 7.30 this evening at the Abington Apartments near West 52nd and Georgetown Road. We are waiting for investigators to release more information about the victim and any possible suspects. He was a familiar and beloved face here at Art WRTV. Tonight, we remember local TV icon Jim Gerard, who passed away this weekend. And I'm Dave First. Who knows when the NBA will get back into a gym? Until then, the man they call country with the Pacers giving back in a very big way. That story coming up in our Sports Extra Spotlight. This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Tonight, we want to mark the passing of a Channel 6 veteran and local broadcast legend, someone who brought music, celebrity interviews, and a little humor into your daily lives in the 60s and 70s, Jim Gerard. Live from the Channel 6 studios, the Jim Gerard Show with Charlotte Daniels, the George Nikoloff Orchestra, and Jim's special guests. And now, here's Jim. Good morning. Good morning and welcome one and all. My goodness. We received word today that Jim died Friday from 1962 to 1976. He was a WFBM, WRTV, Channel 6 TV and radio host, best known for the Jim Gerard show that hit the air in 1966. It was a weekday talk show broadcast live from the Channel 6 studio that attracted some of the biggest names at the time. Bob Hope, the Gabor sisters, Carol Channing, Vice President Hubert Humphrey, Liberace and the amazing Kreskin, just to name a few. Jim also had his own band, the George Nikoloff Orchestra, 
We caught up with Jim last year, almost exactly a year ago as part of Channel 6's 70th anniversary celebration, and he remembered all of it. What happened in the course of the day, it gets to be about noon, and George would have his musicians warming up, and it would reverberate all around the station, all this wonderful music. Anybody who was anybody, they came to us. Jim won numerous awards for the show while at Channel 6, including a Casper Award for Public Service. He is also a member of the Indiana Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Jim died Friday at the age of 93. He is survived by three daughters and a son. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, there will be a full life celebration at a later date. A quick reminder, if you want to vote in the Indiana primary, which has been moved from May 5th to June 2nd because of the COVID-19 crisis, the deadline to register is tomorrow. If you haven't mailed in your registration by now, your best bet is to go online to the Indiana Voter Portal on the BMV website. With a record number of Hoosiers filing for unemployment, we want to connect you to resources that could help you during the pandemic. A new app called Drum aims to connect businesses with gig workers who share deals from the businesses with their friends and coworkers. Businesses get new customers and drummers get to pick the gig they want to promote and get the commission without even leaving their home. It's also designed to help small businesses boost their sales. The team that designed the app started working on it a year ago and realized during the pandemic they could can help businesses survive. Everyone's exploring what it looks like to change how you deliver your service, whether you're a restaurant trying to figure out what a takeout and delivery model looks like, whether you're a physical trainer trying to figure out what it looks like to hold classes over Zoom. Um, there's just so many creative ways that businesses are trying to adapt. Uh, and we think that drum can be one thing that helps contribute to that. Becoming a drummer is simple. All you have to do is log on and learn about the business you want to promote. It's a way to develop sales skills, control your time, and earn money. Kyle. Yeah, we had temperatures that rebounded into the 70s this afternoon before that next wave of rain moved through. That was associated with a front that now brings in some slightly cooler air. Our temperatures, they're sitting in the lower 50s as those skies are clearing out. And now our wind out of the west between about 5 and 10 miles per hour. And as you go out the door tomorrow morning, we will have temperatures generally in the middle 40s. So you might want that jacket as you head out. But we will be dry. In fact, a lot of sunshine. And I think Monday is going to be the pick of the week here because we'll have that sunshine. Temperatures will already make their way close to 60 for the lunchtime. We'll get into the middle 60s and gradually increasing the clouds here as we go through the afternoon. Your high temperature close to 70 degrees in Bloomington and Columbus. That's average for this time of year. Just a little bit cooler, but still nice. Middle 60s for you, Noblesville at 64 Monday afternoon. So here's a look at TrueCast, 730 Monday evening. We've got those clouds overspreading the area outside of a couple of showers in southwestern communities. I think we're dry through the overnight tomorrow night. It's really as we get into Tuesday morning, we see that rain overspreading the area and it's going to be with us throughout the day on Tuesday. I don't think it's going to be all that heavy, so we shouldn't see the amounts like we had last night in parts of the Hoosier State. Temperatures, that's what you're going to feel on Tuesday. We are stuck in the 40s as we go through the morning hours and we're not going to warm much from there, only into the lower and middle 50s Tuesday afternoon. And this kind of sets the stage as we go through the next several Several days because as we get into next weekend again we got to talk about the potential for some frost coming our way let's put it all together for you now in the seven-day planning forecast so the bright spots Monday and Thursday that's where we got highs in the 60s and some sunshine otherwise we're talking about some scattered showers in that forecast highs only in the 50s right now it looks like as we go towards Mother's Day things are going to be a little cool but we should be dry as we go into the afternoon Nicole Kyle, thank you. Gumbo, Makshu, and Etouffee. Some tastes of New Orleans can be found at one of Indy's favorite restaurants, and the man serving them up has a personality just as big as those flavors. We'll show you how Yats is staying open. Together, working for you. Costco is limiting meat purchases, purchases per customer. It will limit beef, pork, and poultry products to three items per, per member. Costco says it has made changes based on public health guidelines, including requiring face coverings, using reusable shopping bags, and putting restrictions on returns. Find out more details on Costco's website.
Over the last month, we've been showing you some area restaurants that have continued serving their customers in communities. One of those places has carved out a loyal bunch of fans over the years with some big flavors from way down south. Brad Brown takes us inside. You could walk right by this little shop on the south end of Broad Ripple, but those in the know know that some of Indy's best food is inside. Our customers have been so understanding and so generous with the staff. And man, I'm lucky I got these few kids that still want to work. This guy, you know, that they still, you know, are here working. And and, and making it happen. This first location of Yes opened in 2001. Now they're all over the area. While some of those locations are closed for now, the ones that are open keep the Bayou flavors flowing. Just wanted to, man, just like, you know, get grounded somewhere and, and just be in business where, I'm, you know, it was, it was not complicated and it could make uh, a living and just kind of get along. Joe is at the heart of it all, one of the great characters of Indy's restaurant community. I don't know, like this guy, where are you going with that bicycle, man? What, what, what? The guy in the early, he wanted to buy a couple hundred dollars worth of gift certificates. And I said, oh man, we're okay. What if I die? I said, hey, you're going to get jugged for the 200 bucks. A little bit Cajun, a little bit Creole. Even if you don't know what it is, once you taste Yats, chances are you'll be back. A lot of this stuff was from my mother and people, you know, just, you know, just, they were cooked. Everybody was with my sister, was a great cook, you know. Uh, the white chili's from my wife, she's from Wisconsin. I don't know what happened there. And an expert tip, get the extra bread. We, we, the, the people, but that's one of the things I love about Indiana, I love about Indianapolis, is the people, you know. Next month, they'll be, they'll be doing this for 50 years, or half a century. So many times the people are really grateful that you open, they leave and they say, thank you for being here, thank you for opening, being open. Joe says he has no plans of slowing down anytime soon, wants to just keep on serving his customers as long as he can. Along with takeout, Yats is offering pop your trunk curbside pickup at most of their locations. You can find that information and order online on their website. Working for you, Brad Brown, RTV6. RF.org. Ball State students graduated this weekend, but due to COVID-19 restrictions, they did not get to walk across the stage. In effort to celebrate, a Greenwood family held a parade today for telecommunications and journalism graduate Blake Williamson. Blake had no idea the surprise was coming, but his mom says she wanted to acknowledge him for his big accomplishment. With the COVID-19, I couldn't do a party or dinner or even a commencement, I'm like, what can I do to honor my son graduating from Ball State University? And I love WRTV sucks. I've reached out to them. Everybody has been great. I had no idea <laughs> at all. I thought it was just gonna be a small thing and I had no expectation of this. So it was kind of surreal seeing all of those people that I haven't seen in forever coming, coming through and driving by. So it was definitely cool to have all that. Blake's mom tells us he is the first Williamson male to graduate from college and she wanted to show him just how proud of him she is. She invited his neighbors, family, college, and high school friends to the parade. There are two possible dates for Ball State's commencement, but a specific date hasn't been announced yet. Kyle. And congratulations to all the graduates. Tomorrow it's going to be a great outdoor day as we've got some sunshine temperatures in the 60s. Not as much as we get into Tuesday. You're going to need that umbrella with temperatures only in the 50s. All right, Kyle. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Indiana. Starts at 430. Have a great night.